it's Adam here for PC Monitors, and in this video I'm going to be taking a look at the OSD on-screen display menu system of the Dell Alienware AW3423DW. The OSD is controlled by a joystick, and you'll find that beneath the Alienware logo on the bottom bezel, or beneath the bottom bezel. If you press the joystick in or twiddle it in any direction, it brings up this little quick menu. So you can see at the top a little summary of some of the settings there, but you can also select one of these little quick options. And you can configure these in the main menu system to your liking. So I've got this set to preset modes, preset mode creator, preset mode warm, the frame rate function, which I'll show you shortly, brightness and contrast, and that's that. So if you go into the main menu, and you go into the main menu by pressing the joystick up, which will select the up option, you then use the joystick as you'd expect. It's pretty intuitive directional movement there. You go to Personalize, which has that little star icon there. So they're called shortcut keys, and there are five different shortcut keys, and you can configure them how you like. So you can have it set to a specific preset, or you can have it so it shows all modes and you select the preset. There's Game Enhanced Mode, so that's what I had when I showed you Frame Rate. There's also Timer, Display Alignment there, Dark Stabilizer, Brightness and Contrast, Input Source, and Volume. And there's an option there to reset personalization, so you reset these to the factory default functions. There's also a little power LED, which is actually an alien effects lighting feature, which I'll show you shortly, towards the right side, and that has an accompanying power button as well, so there's a dedicated power button for this one. So in the main menu system, there's game, that's the first part of the menu, various different preset modes. So standard, that's the factory default. Creator is an interesting one because it allows you to change the color space, so there's an sRGB emulation setting if you set that to sRGB. If you have this set to DCI-P3 then it just uses the full native gamut of the monitor, which is actually a little bit beyond DCI-P3. And there's also a gamma option tied to this creator preset, so you can change that between a gamma of 1.8 and 2.6 in increments of 0.2. I prefer the 2.4 setting for reasons explored in the review. There's an FPS setting, this just upsets various different parts of the image. If you've seen my videos before, you'd probably know that I was going to say something like that. You can adjust the brightness, but you can't adjust the colour channels, and it does make some changes to the colour channels and gamma. If you like how this looks, then by all means, use it. I've just got Legom, legom.nl, the website open, the black levels tests. This doesn't appear on the video exactly how it'll appear by eye, but by eye, you can see that the depth of the black shade is raised a lot. It's doing that for a competitive advantage or potential competitive advantage as an FPS mode. It also oversaturates colors, purposefully crushes things together in that way. So it could give you a competitive edge. So if you do like to use it, then by all means do, but visually, I really don't like it at all. Same can be said for MOBA, RTS, just makes different adjustments. Again, if you like how that looks, that's fine. RPG, more of the same. It's actually a bit better balanced in my view, but there is some oversaturation, and it does change the gamma, makes things look quite deep and cinematic in a way. And there's a sports setting which seems to set the gamma particularly high, has a rather contrasty look, quite a stark look I guess you could say. If you like that look then fine, but I don't personally see why this would be useful for sports games or sports viewing, but that's what it is. There's also Game 1, Game 2 and Game 3, they're fully customizable, and if you select one of those, you can change the red, green, blue, cyan, magenta, and yellow channels. So they're set to 50% by default. You can change them according to your preferences. There's also a dark stabilizer setting, which you can adjust. So this is set to zero by default, which means it's disabled. I'll just quickly open up Legom again. So if you increase this, it does lift up the depth of those dark shades to improve visibility, to give you a competitive edge. That's what it's designed to do. It doesn't touch the depth of pure blacks, so your black does remain nice and deep. In other words, the contrast isn't affected. There is warm, which is a low blue light setting, as I explore in the review. There's cool, which gives things a cool tint, if you like that kind of thing. And there's custom color, which allows you to change the red, green, and blue color channels manually. These are set to 100% by default. So something that I think would be better is if they had these assigned to the creator preset. So you can adjust the gamma, you can adjust the color space, that makes sense. But really, you might like to adjust the color channels as well. But there is no preset where you can adjust the gamma and color space and also the color channels. They've sort of separated it out in a bit of a weird way, to be honest. 
I'm now running the monitor under HDR. I've enabled the HDR toggle in Windows. Just to show you that the menu does change when you're running in HDR. It says HDR plus there. don't really know what the plus means. It's kind of just what Dell tends to call it with HDR. And the most relevant setting here is HDR mode, which is explored in the review. You can set that to HDR 400 True Black or HDR Peak 1000. Something I notice is it sometimes reverted to showing that it was HDR 400 True Black, well, that's what it displayed on the menu, but actually if you selected HDR Peak 1000 it will stick with that even though it might be showing HDR 400 True Black. So this is just a little bug with the firmware. It might even be fixed with newer revisions of the monitor. Mine was a pretty early one. So if you do see it change to something you're not expecting there, then don't worry, it will still be using the setting that you'd actually selected. And as you can see, you can change Dark Stabilizer in some other settings, so it isn't just tied to those Game 1, Game 2 and Game 3 presets. And you can also adjust it under HDR, because I'm running HDR at the moment, but you really wouldn't want to do that, that's just going to mess up the image and go against the HDR metadata. And with that said, if you had the Creator Mode active before, you can see it's greyed out now, it would still be running that, but the standard creator, game one, game two, game three, and custom color are giving you exactly the same image unless you manually adjust the color channels. I would avoid using FPS, MOBA slash RTS, RPG, or sports under HDR because that's really going to upset the image and go completely against the metadata, which is how things should be looking. And just to note that you can't adjust the brightness under HDR, that's all configured automatically, as is usually the case for models with a proper level of HDR like this one has. Back in SDR again now, next is Game Enhance Mode. So that has an on-screen timer feature, which will count down from what you select in minutes and display that towards the top of the screen. There's Frame Rate, which will instead show you the current refresh rate of the monitor. If you're using VRR, I've just opened the NVIDIA Pendulum demo, you'll see that it changes to reflect the frame rate of the content. If you're not using VRR, you're not using G-Sync or AMD FreeSync, then it will just show the static refresh rate of the display. You might have also noticed that it selects only one of these at a time. You can't have a timer and frame rate display at the same time. The Zen Display Alignment, so it puts these little blinking red blocks on the screen and it's just designed so you can line up multiple displays more accurately. To exit that alignment process you can just press the joystick. And there's an option to reset game, so reset the game section of the menu to the factory default. There's then brightness and contrast, usual controls there. Input source, you can select the input used by the monitor, you can also have it so it doesn't automatically select the input for you. you can have it so it's always manually selected by you. And then we have alien effects lighting. So you can control various different zones on the monitor. So it says there zone one logo, zone two ring, which is at the rear of the monitor. Zone three down lights, which is near the OSD of the monitor. And zone four, the power button. So you can set these up according to your own preferences. So you could have the logo, which is a little alien logo on the back. I'll show you that very shortly. You could have that red if you wanted, the ring. You could have that set, well, it could be red as well. It doesn't really matter. Down lights. So if you go to custom color now, you can then change this to one of the preset colors there. And then there's a power button, which you can select a different color for if you like. And also with the power button, you can have it so it's always on, or you can have it so it's off when the monitor is on, but would be on when it's in standby, or you can have it off when it's on and off in standby mode. In other words, it's always gonna be off. So you can see how I've set it up there. So I've got the power button zone there. That's actually quite a vibrant bluish purple to the eye. It might not look that way on the video, however. There's the down light. You might notice that's switched off. That's because it's actually a touch sensitive bar just under the Alienware logo. So it's actually a little bit closer to you than the bar itself. And that just turns the bar on or off. So this downlight feature, it's kind of a nice idea the way they've got the touch sensitive thing. So you'd think maybe you could use it as a reading light, but it's really not very bright at all. It does give a little pool of light underneath the monitor. I wouldn't say it's particularly useful for reading or anything like that. Depends if you're used to reading in particularly dim light, I guess. So it just gives a little bit of ambience, I guess, beneath the monitor. And the same with the lighting features at the rear. So the monitor is not particularly close to the wall at the moment, which is why you couldn't really see much 
of a pool of light behind the monitor. If it's closer to the wall, it still doesn't give you a very strong glow, to be honest. Only very slightly stronger than what you see here, so it can't really be used as a bias light, or I don't consider it a bias light, but you can still see it from the front. So it does give a bit of ambience. So the ring itself, it's a big oval like that, and then there's the alien head as well. Sorry about the camera exposure, you can't really see the little details on the head there. There we go, a bit more like that. If you find the static patterns a little bit boring, you can change them to a few different animated modes as well. Custom, by the way, that's if you're using the Alien Command Center software to control it, and I'll show you that very shortly. But if you go on Lighting Effects, it has a few different options here. There's Spectrum, you can set them all to Spectrum, or perhaps you can, yeah, it just sets them all to Spectrum. So they're now cycling various different colors. Very exciting. Or well, there's Comet, which only affects the ring. So the other lighting zones you just configure manually there, like I did before anyway. But then the ring does this sort of Comet effect, as they call it. And finally, there's Rainbow Cycle, which is a little bit like Spectrum, I guess, but cycles more rapidly. And also, you might notice the ring has different sections, which are different colours, and that's why the ring can be used for various different animations, whereas the other lights can't. I just want to quickly point out that because of how I've got the camera mounted at the moment, it does make the screen look ridiculously curved and has this weird pincushion effect. You don't notice that to the eye at all, so don't worry about that. But I'm going to show you the Alienware Command Center application now. There's a link to this page where you download it from in the description of the video. You want not just the Command Center application, but also the Alienware Alien Effects Lighting Manager communication driver. It says optional, perhaps that's because Perhaps Windows sometimes installs that for you, I'm not sure, but I would recommend downloading that as well. Be aware that the application, the main application, is actually quite big for something that you might just want to use for changing a few LEDs on the monitor. It's a bit excessive to have a 900 megabyte file. Once you've downloaded that, it's installed as an app in Windows, so you can just launch that by typing in Alien or something like that into your Start menu. But the main setting of interest is FX, so that's the lighting effects feature. And you can basically just adjust the zones according to your preferences. So you just press edit there, and then that allows you to either change all of the zones at the same time, or you can individually select different zones. And then you have a little color wheel there, or you can type in the RGB value if you prefer, however you want to do it. And there are a few different effects as well. I don't want to spend too long going through all of this. I think you know how RGB lights look, and I've shown you it with the OSD system. And if you like the setup you've got there and you want to assign it to a particular game, so when you launch that game, it will change the lighting to that particular style or those particular colors, whatever it might be, then you can do that. You can save it as a theme on the main page or the home page of the Command Center application. You can see there are various different games here. So you can click on one of those and select the theme that you want to use. You might see now it sets to custom on, that's because I was configuring it with the command center software, but you can just manually configure it here in the OSD and then it will take over control. There's also an option here to reset alien effects lighting to reset everything to the factory defaults. Next is audio. There aren't integrated speakers with this model, but this is just to adjust the volume of anything that would be connected to the 3.5 millimeter jack. So you can change the volume of that and reset audio, which will just reset that volume to 50, which is the default value. You've then got menu, you can change the language that the OSD is displayed in. Transparency effect, you can change that. There's timer, which is how long after the last button press before the menu will automatically disappear. So you can have that set up to 60 seconds or as low as five seconds if you're a real ninja with the display. And you can also see there it says exit left. So if you just press left a couple of times, that's how you manually get rid of the menu. And there's reset menu, which will reset this particular section of the menu to the factory defaults. 
Next, you've got personalize, which I've been through, and then others. So there's display info that will display a few things like your current resolution and refresh rate, the maximum resolution and refresh rate supported, the version that you're using for DisplayPort and HDMI, and whether it's using G-Sync or not, or whether the G-Sync module is active, I believe that is. I didn't actually check this with my AMD GP, but I think it still says G-Sync there, if VRR is active, Adaptive Sync is active in that case. It then shows you your current firmware revision, your service tag, ambient light sensor. So this allows the monitor to adjust its brightness according to the room lighting. There's a light sensor on the top of the monitor. I find that this makes the display very dim, even if the room is quite bright. So it doesn't work for me. And you can actually adjust your brightness. This is just how you would cap it a bit. But even with this set to 100%, I often find that when you then have the ambient light sensor active, it's too dim. It might work for you, it might work for some people though. If it does, then fine, you can use it and that's great, but it doesn't work for me and I would have preferred to have seen a greater adjustment range there. You've then got eco mode. What it's supposed to do is it's supposed to allow the monitor to turn off if it loses a signal, as if you've pressed the power button, one would assume, but it doesn't seem to change the behavior at all, whether eco mode's on or off. It seems to just go into standby in the usual way. And it does turn itself off if it's completed one of its refresh cycles, which I'm gonna talk about very shortly. But that doesn't seem to depend on whether eco mode's enabled. Again, this could just be something with my earlier firmware revision. Maybe this is supposed to do something, but I can't really see what it does on my unit. OLED panel maintenance, so that's what I was referring to with these refresh cycles. So there's pixel refresh and panel refresh. They're explored in the review. The pixel refresh is something which the monitor will want to run for you automatically after four hours of cumulative use. It doesn't just run it when you're actually using the monitor. It's something which will run when the monitor is not being used. So it goes to sleep or it goes into standby. And I think it will do this if you've had the monitor on continuously for 20 hours, it will be a bit more forceful. I haven't done that myself, so I'm not sure exactly what it does in that case, but perhaps it does sort of force you to do a refresh then. There's panel refresh, and that occurs after a cumulative 1,500 hours of use, and you can see more about that in the written review. Finally, there's factory reset, and that resets everything to the factory defaults. So that's all there is to the OSD on-screen display menu system of the Dell Alienware AW3423DW. Be sure to check out the full review on PCMonitors.info. There's a link to that in the description of the video, alongside information about how you can support the work that we do.